Hey there, I'm Eric Doggett, and this is Photog TV, hosted by myself and Dustin Meyer. Episode 18 for Thursday, March 8th, 2012. And today we are very excited to have as our special guest, Kenna Klosterman. We talk about her documentary and travel photography, plus what life is like behind the scenes at Creative Live. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is Photog TV episode 18. Uh, we are almost into the 20s, which is surprised right. me. Uh, <laughs> today we have a very, very special guest. Um, her name is Kenna Klosterman. She is the community manager at Creative Live. And if you have any sort of uh, interest in photography, especially photography education, you know about Creative Live. They produce a series of incredible uh, both live events and, and then later available uh, uh, recorded uh, training sessions where they bring in just the, the top of the line photographers and uh, have them share their secrets. A lot of times they do live uh, shoots right there. And so uh, I'm, I've, I've watched pretty much almost everything religiously. Uh, right. I just picked up uh, Sue Bryce's uh, uh, videos from, uh, from recently. And so I'm, I'm starting in on that. So uh, it, it's good, especially if you like do any travel, you can like stack up videos and just and be good to go. Um, so what we've done today is we've asked Kenna to join us, and we're going to talk to her a little bit about uh, her uh, both her work at Creative Live, and then uh, you know her background in photography because she actually is a photographer. She has done a lot of traveling, a lot of documentary style work um, uh, across the globe, and so we're going to talk about that. And uh, I first wanted to just kind of start it off and just spend a couple minutes talking about any kind of news items. And I guess if you are uh, have not been living under a rock, the biggest item probably this week is yesterday Apple uh, announcing the new iPad and and before we get started for all, well, for all you people that are uh, that are watching out there I do have one thing to show you Let's see if we can get that there it is <laughs> Woo! So my my iPad is for sale um, just on a piece of history just 7.99 I think that's a pretty good deal I'll ship this to you I won't even charge you for shipping <laughs> Is that the so iPad Classic? Yes, the for, iPad Classic. Okay. Could you use it for a, a mouse pad now? I mean, you could use it as a mouse pad. That's true. It could be. Well, I, you know, my six-year-old's been eyeing it. I think he would like mm. to load it up with some SpongeBob episodes or something and go nice. crazy okay. on it. So, are you, any of you guys interested in this? Is this something you're going to run out and buy? Yes, I pre-ordered yesterday. <laughs> and good Apple. As soon as I pre-ordered yesterday, they took my money out of my bank account just like that. I was like. Was, was I at Walmart or something? I was like, wow. I was <laughs> like, it was gone that quick. I was like, it took 15 minutes to get the order through because the website was just down. And as soon as I ordered my, uh, I ordered the 16 gig white uh, Wi-Fi. And as soon turned back around, checked my bank account, money was gone. I was like, okay. This is your 5D Mark II or 5D Mark III money you were talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, that too. I mean, like I said, I'm eating. Look, I'm drinking orange juice and eating beans and weenies and Roman noodles. So, yeah, this month is going to be very great for me. Yeah, and lots of expenses. <laughs> what about you, Dustin? You you looking at it? Uh, you know, I will say this. I did buy the iPad too, which I love. Um, and I really like some of the features they have, like the 4G integrated, as well as um, uh, definitely the the higher resolution screen. I think as photographers, that's going to be a really big draw, you know, just having a higher resolution. Because I remember when I upgraded from the 3GS to the iPhone 4 with the Retina display, like how much, you know, just better the display was. Um, however, I would say that um, unless we get some sponsors for Photog TV, I'm probably going to be eating out of a can of beans and weenies just like Steve, so I'm probably not going to be able to <laughs> afford one right away. <laughs> however, it could be used as a, you know, if we get the, Eric, if you and I go dibs, together and get the one with the 4G built right. in, then we could start taking Photog TV on the road. That's true. That's true. So for those I thought you, you could sell this as like a wedding album for your brides and say, hey, this is the new Retina wedding album and, and look how... Look how yeah, exactly. Your love, love and high definition. That's right. <laughs> 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 we have to word that better, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. The other news item I wanted to briefly chat on was... Um, the announcement of the 5D Mark III, and I don't know if that did that happen this past week or was that uh, was that last week? I don't I don't quite remember. I think it's in it was last week. Yeah. Yeah. That was last week. That was what do you, What do you guys think about that? Was that camera 
I mean, was it everything you wanted it to be, or did you look at it like uh, they're trying to find this kind of niche where they can't really step on the the toes of a of a one DX, um, but they've got to improve a little bit? What do you, What do you guys think about that? I think they did a good job because uh, the 5D Mark II was like an excellent camera. The only problem with the 5D Mark II I had was the noise. I mean, I had I switched from Nikon back to Canon, and I had a D700. The D700 was a beast of a camera. I mean, I could take that thing in like just no light and come out with some excellent images. And also, too, uh, the 5D Mark II, the, uh, the not the sensor, but the uh, autofocus system, which that's been a joke you know, with Canon forever, they finally stepped up, and, like, I was totally surprised. 61-point uh, autofocus system, just like the 1DX, I can actually get that supreme good noise uh, for, for $3,500. And people complain about the price, but what they don't know is the new advanced technology, you know, the Digi5 processor, the uh, autofocus system, the uh, noise. And Canon doesn't do uh, – Canon now is starting to, like, okay, we're going to back off the megapixels. We're going to back off all, like, hey, megapixels don't make, a, make the picture any better or something like that. Unless you're, like, a high-end fashion photographer, um, that's what the D800 uh, is for, like, high-end fashion wedding photographers blowing up, like, billboards for, like, cities and stuff like that. But back to the 5D Mark III, uh, Canon did a really good job with that. Now, some people can complain about it doesn't have uh, clean HDMI out. I don't care about that. It has all the features that I wanted. The autofocus system was upgraded. The iOS is upgraded. The weatherproofing was upgraded. This is one beast of a camera for a wedding photographer such as myself and an event photographer. So, and I'll, it's, it's great, and it's the same size, and they didn't even go up on megapixels, so that's going to be really, really great. Because another one about that, the Canon 7D, the 7D had a really bad problem of, with noise and blowing pictures up and stuff. So they learned their lessons from each of these cameras, and also, too, Canon is still the leader in uh, H, uh, uh, video DSLR. So. Mm-hmm. Now, Steve, I gotta ask you, what? How long does your contract run with Canon, as far as being oh. an Is that a? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know, because I I still got some Nikon cameras around here somewhere, so you know, they yeah. probably run out after the show go up. So thank you for making me lose my contract. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for uh, well, me, I I definitely think it's one of those things where. Um, again, I am always going back to the physics. You know, we've talked about this with lenses. We've talked about this with like how much you know, machinery you can actually fit inside of a body. And I think for me, I've always had issues with the Mark II with, you know, accuracy and focus like Steve was talking about. But for me, I think it was more to do with um, how much torque the focusing motor has inside the body because if the motor isn't, you know, doesn't have enough torque to actually spin the lens fast enough to get it into focus, then um, the focus accuracy is just always going to be a little bit off, in, in my opinion. Maybe somebody else has had better experience. But um, I don't know. I, I have a 1D Mark II, or wait, 1D Mark III from years ago, and I've always loved how great it is focusing in low light, especially with wedding receptions and whatnot. Um, but uh, I also like to shoot wide open a lot. So with my 51.2, um, I need to know that the motor is actually going to get the focus nice and accurate, whereas on the 5D Mark II, I've noticed a lot of times it's off by just eh, just a couple inches or so. Mm-hmm. So that, Yeah, that, that, that seemed to be a common thing, like, after the Mark II came out, there was there was this this kind of undercurrent of people that were looked longingly at, at Nikon's offerings as far as low light focusing, and so I hope uh, I hope they address that. I suspect this will be one of those things where you'll you'll need to get that camera in your hands and play with it, and then make a decision based on that versus you know the the specs uh, that you read online. In case you're unless you were you know looking to upgrade and and you were already that was in your cycle at that point. Um, I, mean, I can see that like you were saying, Eric. The tough thing is that. As a you know smart shopper, most people should rent the camera before they buy it. However, because it's brand new, it's going to be a while before it's even available for rent. So that's kind of the catch yeah. twenty two. Yeah, I that's still true. Um, I still shoot with the five D, and um, I like to say that it's not the gear that matters. So <laughs> yeah, lots <laughs> of people out there. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, yep. the Mark Three is very very far off for most people in this world, and um, the gear doesn't matter. Definitely. That's true. Thank I you for bringing us back to reality, Kenna. <laughs> <laughs> what I do, that's what I do. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, from uh, 
for all of you watching live in the chat room, if you have any questions for Kenna as we go through this, just feel free to ask away, and uh, Dustin and I, will, one of us will catch it, and we'll, we'll drop it in there. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today's special guest is Kenna Klosterman. Very, very excited. Kenna and I had some little conversations back and forth uh, on Google Plus over the last uh, several weeks about, uh, about her coming on, because I, I found it really interesting uh, from the perspective of here's someone who um, works a lot with Creative Live as far as the behind the scenes work, but yet does a lot of photography on her own and has um, been to a lot of places. I mean, I, I, Ken and I went through your blog and started all the way back in the beginning. So it looks like wow. this, your blog, and let's just kind of start there. Your blog starts with with this trip. It looks like you and uh, and two other women are heading off on an adventure, and, and that's the beginning of it, of what I'm guessing was about, a, is it a year-long trip? It was a year-long trip. Uh, my two friends, Ariella and uh, Susan Roderick, who many of you might know as well, she was a co-host on Creative Live. Uh, the three of us took off, quit our jobs, and um, traveled around the world photographing for a year. Went to about 21 countries, worked our way westward, and it had just always been a life dream of mine to like be a National Geographic photographer <laughs> traveling around the world. So the Nat Geo part didn't happen or hasn't happened, uh, but it was, um, it's quite a thing. It's quite a thing to do. So I, I was looking, I was looking over at some of the, some of the posts since then and some of the places I'm just going to rattle off here, Singapore, Bali, Guatemala, Nepal, uh, Fiji, Australia. Was this all within that, that one trip? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we we worked our way westward. We started in Fiji and um, literally went kind of around uh, heading west. And I ended in uh, Nicaragua. So, but lots of through Asia um, and Eastern Europe, and then down to Mexico and uh, Guatemala and Nicaragua. Wow. So how does what, what kind of planning goes into something like that? Because we always hear about, especially like if you follow, say, for example, Tim Ferriss, who's uh, who wrote the Four Hour Work Week and talks about right. this kind of a of a lifestyle. What kind of planning goes into something like this? Well, the way that we got um, the round the world ticket uh, that we got through Star Alliance, you have to you purchase a certain amount of miles, and so you have to designate kind of the major destinations. So that's kind of what we, the major cities that you're going to fly in and out of. And that's where we started, which was really the most challenging thing. I mean, you've never been to a ton of these places, and you don't know how long you want to stay there. Uh, but you can designate those kind of major hubs, and then you can change the date for free, uh, but um, you, you have to identify those. And so it was kind of figuring out what the major places were, but then knowing that we could change that at any time, which we did a lot of. Um, so it was kind of the, the logistics of, first of all, saving money, <laughs> number one. Uh, but, you know, packing up, getting somebody to rent my place, um, just kind of mentally preparing to leave my life here behind and right. packing, packing everything up into one little little bag. <laughs> so that's interesting. So, I mean, by the time you leave, you know you're going to spend this time, all this time traveling, you have a, a basic kind of outline of where you're going. Did you have any thought as far as like, this is what I'm going to do when I get back, or here's what, here's how I'm going to kind of, you know, no. get back into thing? <laughs> so I left, um, I worked in corporate marketing for many years, and that was what I was leaving behind. Uh, and so all I knew was that I thought it would be fairly easy to come back and get a job in whatever fashion that would be. Now, this was in the year of 2008, and so the economy completely tanked uh, during that year. So it wasn't quite the same to come back to uh, what we had left. Uh, so I kind of, I was, I was leaving that open to you kind of letting go of what might happen a year from then. Wow. So you're traveling around all these countries, and, it, and if, by the way, um, if you haven't checked out uh, her blog, we, we should put a link to that. Um, Dustin, can you can you put that in there in the in the uh, in the chat area? So you um, you're traveling around all these countries. You're meeting all these people that live there. Um, how did that? I say, how did that affect you as far as like your mindset going into the trip, and then you go to some of these places which are you know very very poor. Um, right. How does that? Uh, 
how did that you know kind of play into your psyche as far as the trip and and did that did that maybe give you some uh, a different kind of purpose to the trip that you had you know versus when you started absolutely uh, great question I think what generally what I found was that people are really the same <laughs> all over the world uh, with regard to um, what we desire in life, um, family being important, friends being important, um, and just kind of this search for a, for to live a good life. I think we have kind of a warped <laughs> sense, I, I believe, in, in the United States about what success is. Um, and I think leaving that um, for, for a while um, definitely changed my outlook on, on what I want out of my life and what life is about. And I think one of the biggest revelations is that the people who have less give more. And many, many, many parts of the world where you know that people are living on less than a dollar a day would welcome you into their homes, complete strangers, offer you tea, offer you food, and I. It's a it's a different way to look at the world in a lot of places. So how does that um, did that vary at all from from country to country? Did you find, for example, people in one country more um, more open as far as like letting you take their their portraits versus another country? How did that play? Yeah, certainly. Um, there are definitely uh, places like, for example. Um, but when I when I got to Guatemala, uh, there are certain cultures that believe that when you are taking their photograph, that you are taking a bit of their soul. And so I can certainly remember being in places that um, I really wanted to photograph, but had to completely respect uh, the the cultural beliefs. And um, and so yeah, certain certain. Certain countries, people are definitely more more open to being photographed. Like generally, kids kids anywhere love to be photographed, <laughs> especially <laughs> now with digital cameras that you can come and see what's on the back of it. So you just show them the back of it while you're shooting, and they get all excited and, and right. want to do it more. But, can I, but, oh, oh, go please. ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask you because you really brought up a valid point that I think um, you know actually kind of plays into sort of like what we're doing right now where we're video conferencing from you know miles apart and talking about human behavior when it comes to people welcoming you into their homes and feeding you and being very genuine with their offerings of friendship. Um, has that kind of, I mean, I assume that a, a, a travel like this across the world would already have a major impact on your life and the way you view the world, but specifically about how these people welcomed you into their homes where, you know, maybe... Um, you know, the gear that you were carrying was enough to probably feed them for a year or something like that, and they're still treating you with such warm, genuine hospitality. Has that kind of um, changed your viewpoint on the way that you interact with people on a daily basis now that you're back in the States? Wow, I think that's that's really interesting to think about. Um, I don't welcome everybody who's walking down the street <laughs> in my home. <laughs> Um, well, let's just say, like, but, when you do interact with people, like, yeah, on a regular no, basis. Yeah, no, I, I find that, um, especially when I was in countries where you, I don't speak a common language. Um, I was, I was, up in Kashmir, um, in a in a tent with, um, with gypsies, essentially, uh, and um, up in the mountains, and it started. It was pouring rain, and they let us into their tent, and we were just kind of sharing smiles and looking at, you know, taking some photos, looking at the back of the camera. Um, and there's definitely, for me, I, I find that I have an energy, I connect, try to connect with people on an energetic level, um, and that, it goes beyond any, any language. And so, now that I'm thinking about your question, I think that, um, I believe I'm able to connect with people, and it doesn't have to be through language. And so, I definitely, when I when I walk by people on the street, as I am walking around, like I say hi to strangers, and I think that's something that that perhaps did come from from traveling around the world. In Nepal, 
In Nepal, everywhere you go, when you kind of look at anybody, you say namaste, namaste. And so I spent about five weeks in Nepal, and um, that that's a practice that is lovely. Can you imagine if everyone in the States walked around and greeted everyone that they saw or looked it in the eye? I'm still trying to get people just to open the door for other people. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Now, one question we got here from the chat room, uh, can a, somebody named Digital Mitchell wanted to know, did you have an interpreter at all or a guide, or were you guys just on your own for the whole trip? Hey, Digital Mitchell. <laughs> um, we, there were certain places where um, we had a guide, but that was for specific things, like that story I just told about being in Kashmir. Um, we definitely... Um, had a guide when we were hiking up in the hills there who was just taking us around. Um, but no, we were totally solo. Um, I was with my friends for six, seven months, and then I was traveling by myself for the rest of the time. Um, so no, no guides, really, unless it was something very specific. Wow. So one thing I saw on your website when you talk about this trip was that on some level, you're helping, you mentioned like building custom image libraries, I guess, for these countries or whatnot. Talk a little bit about that. How does that, how does that work? Okay, so that was um, specifically, I volunteered for an organization down in Guatemala uh, called Camino Seguro, or Safe Passage in English. And I um, spent a week, which isn't a whole lot of time, but... Um, this organization is in Guatemala City, and they educate the children of the families that work in the dump um, in Guatemala City. So they um, are a whole kind of a group of people who get the recyclables out of the dump and then sell those. Um, and so there were, used to be a lot of children who were also working in the dump, and so the government there sort of, sort of banned um, children from being there, um, but so there's this organization actually started by an American woman. Um, and they have about 500 children in their program at any given time. So I connected with them and just did a full, um, spent the week photographing um, their organization, photographing um, the children, but also um, in the school that like literally some of it was doing class photos of all the different classes, uh, but then really helping build up an image library that they can utilize for, um, for their marketing or for their um, fundraising. Uh, it was a really, really incredible experience. I was able to actually go into um, some of the, the neighborhoods that, um, where, some, where the families live, where it's literally these, um, I have a, a, on my website, I have a, a gallery about this, but it or literally the it's landfill that they built their their homes on, um, and I most of the volunteers at uh, Camino Seguro don't get the opportunity to go into the neighborhoods because it's dangerous. Um, dangerous. We we could only stay for like 15 minutes because if people heard that there were expensive cameras there. Um, that, that we might be in danger. And we were with a guide at that point or somebody who worked at the organization. But it was a really powerful experience um, for me personally, but then to be able to um, create an image library for them to utilize. That's great. Wow. So let's, um, let's start to transition a little bit. So you, you, you go through this incredible experience traveling to all these countries. Uh, you, you get back to the States. How, does, how do you then go from, from returning from that trip into the Creative Live. Talk about that, how that process <laughs> happened. Yeah, that was tough. It's, um, there's a scene in a movie that I'm totally blanking on right now where um, a guy comes back from, from Afghanistan and is, goes down the cereal aisle and just looks at like the vast number of options of cereal and is just like blown away. So there was... Definitely, like, the excess in the U.S. was really hard to come back to. Um, and like I said, the, the economy had tanked. So I spent, and, and so when I got back and didn't really want to go back into corporate marketing, but it was the only thing that I knew that I could do, 
So it took me about three and a half months, um, but I was then able to, was very lucky to actually get a job. And I lasted about six months. <laughs> it was then like, nope, this really is not for me. I really cannot sit in a cubicle. Yeah. Um, I just felt like I really was building PowerPoints and not really doing anything. And I needed to do something. So I quit uh, and decided to go for um, trying to figure out how to build a photography business. Um, I didn't know how to do lighting. I didn't know post-processing. If you look at the images from my travels, none of those, for the most part, in all the back uh, blogs, none of those are post-processed. I didn't know how to use Lightroom. I didn't know how to use Photoshop. So um, these were the two things that I was like, oh my gosh, how can I be a professional photographer if I don't know lighting and I don't know post-processing? But I had no money. <laughs> and so I, I had never been using Twitter. Um, I signed up for Twitter and somehow it's like the magical tweet came through that said something about free photography classes at this place called Creative Text, which is what it was called at the time. And so I followed the tweet, and um, sure enough, they were, they were offering classes on, on studio lighting and on Photoshop. So I said, perfect, and they were free. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the ability to go in person and, at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday, um, and they were looking for people to be in their studio audience. So literally, it was a tweet from our local camera shop, Glazers. Thank you, Glazers. Um, that led me to Creative Live uh, over two years ago. Wow, so they start doing these classes, you start attending the classes. Yep. And then what? Someone says, <laughs> hey, she's, she's getting really good at this really quick. <laughs> yeah, so at the time, um, at the time, it was very different. Uh, creative Text, we were in a very a smaller place, um, and there were some off-screen chat hosts, um, and because I was going, and my friend Susan Roderick, again, who was my, my co-host, it was kind of two of us were partners in crime, um, and we were going like, we became the biggest groupies. We were going like three times a week uh, to every class that they had. And soon enough, Craig Swanson, uh, who is the founder of Creative Live, um, he said, hey, you know, we, we need some more people to be these chat hosts asking questions to the instructors. This was not on camera at all. We were just like way in the background. Susan and I were in our jeans and t-shirts. And, um, and we started as chat hosts, volunteering. And it just grew from there. And a year and a half later, I, um, Susan and I came on board to actually, as contractors, to do social media for Creative Live and continue the hosting and doing behind the scenes videos and, and such. And then uh, another six months later, and I uh, went on board full time with Creative Live uh, in the end of October. So it's been wow. you know, a journey over two years. Um, most of that time was, was volunteering, and I, I essentially got a free education um, big time. Uh, I've been probably to over 50 workshops at Creative wow. Live uh, for free. So That's, That um, would be a great place to volunteer. I could see it. Like, it was. <laughs> looking for some way to both gain knowledge and contribute, that would, be, that would be a good place to do it. Well, it is. It is, and we're always um, taking on new volunteers. So. Wow. So we have a question so, here. Oh. Um, oh, go ahead, Dustin. Well, I, w I was just going to say, you know, just I, I know that you guys, um, you know, definitely appreciate all the people that come and, you know, to the show and do all their free uh, se uh, seminars with you guys. I know uh, recently you guys had Jack Hollingsworth, who is a iPhoneography guru. So if you guys are out there, make sure you follow Jack. Awesome. He's actually a local Austinite. Yes, we are yeah. all about Austin people. <laughs> uh, but... Um, I know that everybody that you guys have on there are just amazing, but is there a particular guest that y you've worked with on the show that either just blew your mind or just cracked you up or just really sticks out in your mind? I was really hoping you were not going to ask me. Like that. <laughs> That's <laughs> a great question. I didn't even think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> either I was going to ask it or the audience was going to ask it. Yeah. So. How can I choose my guest? It could guy? be worse. Uh, we could ask you who the worst person was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there are no worst. Every, there's no best. There is no worst. Only different. 
That's the safe play right there, ladies and gentlemen. No, um, I mean, anyone who joined us this, this weekend, Sue Bryce um, was, who is a portrait photographer, a glamour portrait photographer, uh, redefining, redefining glamour, um, is an incredible, incredible educator and person, and she blew everybody away um, in terms of our audience and was hugely, hugely, um, gosh, it was just incredible. So that, that was my most recent favorite. How about that? <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a safe but perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> so I got one question here in the chat room from Emily Evan Sloan. She wanted to know, outside of all the Creative Live people, do you actually have a, is there a community of photographers that you hang with up there in, uh, in Seattle? It's separate. Hi, hi, Emily. Emily was uh, with us in person um, for one of our workshops. So thanks for tuning in. I uh, hope the knitting is going well in Kansas City. Um, right now, I spend a lot of time at Creative Live, <laughs> uh, but um, some of us are involved in, and one of my coworkers, uh, Kate Haley, is really involved in the, in more involved in the local uh, Seattle photography scene than I am. Um, and in fact, we both have been involved in um, in help portrait for uh, three years, and that is certainly a place where I've um, connected with a lot of local photographers. Uh, but there's things like the Seattle Flickerites um, that Kate is heavily involved in, um, and I've attended some of the time. We have a ton of um, John Cornicello, who many many of you may know. Uh, he has is always. He's the man. He's um, taught a couple of classes at Creative Live, but is also uh, always there as, a, an, as an assistant to our uh, many of our instructors. He's incredibly involved and connected in the in the Seattle photography community. So, I think I'm. I would like to be more involved than I am right now. But um, there's a huge community of people here. Lots of photo walks, and those are fun. So, where do you see? Uh Creative Live going? I mean, it's, it's kind of reached this, this particular level. Are there things that you want to do as far as like on the community management side of it that, that you want to improve on for this year or bigger goals? Absol absolutely. Um, I think as, let's see, as there are a lot of people who know about Creative Live. There are a lot of people who have never heard of Creative Live. And we just see that as there is an amazing opportunity um, to reach more and more people in the world um, with our with free education. I think that the way that it's worked up until now and the way that it will continue to work is through word of mouth. Um, and it's really um, through social media that we have expanded and continue to expand. Um, and so we, it's really about the people. It's really about our global community. And uh, people, the, the people who come and are in our in-person studio audience, um, for every workshop, if people don't know, uh, people submit videos to be, come and be part of the six people that kind of represent the internet that the educators are teaching to directly, but kind of, again, representing everybody around the world who is watching. And, and they really uh, become our ambassadors. But even the people who aren't, um, don't have the opportunity to come in person. And there are tens of thousands of our ambassadors out there. Um, and so thank you, first of all, for, for spreading the word. I personally, um, the, the Creative Live blog is a place for me that um, has a lot of opportunity. Um, I've solicited um, asking for people to be guest bloggers. Um, and so I invite all of you out there as well. Um, the Creative Life blog for me is a place for education and inspiration. And yes, we have amazing educators that come to Creative Live for our workshops, but we have an, like, it's an amazingly massive community of photographers and non-photographers to share with each other. Um, and that you see happen in the chat rooms uh, during our live events or on our forum. But I think that that is really a place where this is not just about our educators. This is about our really our global community. So um, if anybody has ideas out there um, for how we can continue to grow that community, um, email me at kenna at creativelive.com, tweet, what have you. But 
Right. We're all about the people, and we're all about, you know, for our instructors, we're all about asking you guys out there, who do you want to see on Creative Live? Well, that, <coughs> that brings up, that, that's a good segue into a question here in the chat room by Photo Ari, or Photo Ari, uh, I'm sure I did that wrong, uh, wanted to know who, who was it out there that you wanted to, to see come teach? Was there, is there a particular photographer out there that you're following that... Uh, that you would love to have someday on Creative Live? Besides Eric. Besides, yeah, besides <laughs> me. Or Dustin. Nice <laughs> <Besides you. laughs> the two of you, for sure. Um, actually, the person that I would really love to come see, um, to, to see on Creative Live, is a photographer named Amy Vitali. Are you familiar with her? V-I-T-A-L-E, and that's A-M-I, Amy Vitali. Uh -huh. She is a very inspiring photojournalist and documentary photographer and I just we we haven't done anything um, with regard to documentary photography and since that is my uh, what I'm most enthusiastic about or one of the things I just I love her um, her sensibility her work her spirit and maybe today I will reach out to her. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because how, would, how could you do that? I mean, most of the people you've had work really well in that kind of um, studio kind of controlled environment. But when you want to, are you just going to have to lead a, a gaggle of people walking the streets and, and talking about that? Or how, how would you do that? That's the challenge. That is the challenge. Um, you know, we, you've seen for some of our workshops, you know, primarily we're all in the Creative Life studio. We had a recent one uh, with Zach and Jody Gray where we were at a different location for, a, for their wedding photography workshop where we we're at a, a mansion here in North Seattle. But to broadcast from there is, 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 is um, definitely more challenging uh, than than to broadcast from our studio, and so yes, part of the part of the goal with Creative Live is that we're not just talking about what we're doing, but we're actually showing and doing. Um, so we're actually creating as part of the experience, and hopefully people are out there creating at the same time, practicing in the evening or what have you. And so yeah, so something like travel photography. Um, documentary photography is a, is a bit more challenging. So, if it's anyone has thing, ideas, I guess it'd be one thing if you're like following around one person and that person goes up and asks to take someone's photograph. But when you got you know, <laughs> ten or twenty people coming up there and saying, "Hey, we're all part of this class," so <laughs> and we got this live thing going on behind us, let's just right. let's take a picture. That could be a challenge for sure. Right. I would just like to drop the hint for anybody who's watching this later on via live stream or YouTube that uh, the Zach and Jody workshop actually trended on Twitter. So um, that was one of the things I, I got on there, and shortly thereafter, WPPI trended on Twitter. So just to kind of give you the immensity of how many people were interacting with that one workshop with Zach and Jody, it just really kind of gives you some perspective on how far-reaching these workshops are and how much impact it has and how much people are hungry for education and the good yeah. that Creative Live is doing for that need. Yeah, thank you. That was super fun. Uh, somebody let Zach know that that we were that he was that he and Jody were trending, and uh, it was like uh, Zach and Jody, and then Facebook IPO. <laughs> so it was like next week trending. <laughs> so if we had like a Zach and Jody IPO, they would be set. <laughs> so Zach, Jody, if you guys are listening, which eventually you probably will be, um, we. Also, ask as compensation some shares in your yeah, your, that's right. Your in public options, so that'd be great. <laughs> or maybe Facebook. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll take a little Facebook, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, we're this has been great. I've really enjoyed this. Before before we wrap up, though, I do wanted to talk on this this bigger issue of because I saw this theme when I was looking through everything, um, reading as much as I could about you. I saw this theme this theme of of karma. This kind of o over writing thing of everything and I wondered if you could talk a little about about that because it, it seems to be a theme that followed both in your um, photography around the world and then and then at Creative Live where you kind of really take the idea of karma importantly and I wonder maybe if you could shed a little bit of, about that. Hmm. Well um, thank no you. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for um, that that's really special to me actually that that's what you um, picked up um, about me and and um, I feel very humbled and honored to be part of Creative Live. Um, we 
are just getting started, um, and it's really, really exciting um, just where we're going to go, uh, I think. And I think, yeah, I mean, I think everything that you do, that you put out there, comes back around. And I think our, our lives are just reflections of what we are um, putting out there. And so I have always been, I was always raised um, with, thanks mom and dad, um, with a, um, a responsibility to, uh, to give back and to help other people um, in the world. And man, what an opportunity that I have fallen into to be able to do that uh, with, with Creative Live. So I think um, the more that you give, the more that you get. And I think, like I said, the people around the world um, that I met that have the least are the ones that are the most giving. And I think if we can think about that as we go through our daily lives, um, all the better. Have you found that um, since you've been on this, this kind of journey over the last couple of years that you are more attuned to seeing karma in terms of um, do you look at things, you know, the good that happened to you and, and it's almost like a mindset, like you, you kind of zero in and say that actually is, um, I don't want to say a result of me doing something good, but it's tied into that. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, I think um, me, as Sue, Sue Bryce talked about this a lot this weekend, that our lives are what we make of it. Um, our, like our giving and our everything that we do um, comes back around and it's it's um, it's up to each of us to create to create our life and so I think the people that um, we bring on creative live who are giving who are opening up themselves raw the educators raw for three days live um, it's amazing to watch their transformations um, in terms of what they get out of it and how much they've given and what um, some of the some of the changes that how it affects them personally and and I get to experience that all the time and I experience that with all of you who who share your stories the people who have again come and been here in person um, it's just an amazing thing to be at a place where we're constantly creating and constantly doing new things and that's that's really what we're all about is uh, is that active creation and not being stagnant and I don't know if that really answered your question but oh, sure. um, well it was interesting to hear when you mentioned the idea that the that people who are giving these classes have an experience too beyond just it's three days and I'm exhausted and ready to go home that there's something to it that um, that that lingers with them afterwards yeah shout out to Penny de los Santos um, if you missed her workshop it was it was about food photography, but it was about so much more. Um, and Penny really not only um, touched so many people out there, but she herself talks about still today how her life was transformed by the experience. And actually, she just did a, a TEDx talk there in Austin. So oh wow, uh, check I'll that out up, yeah. on, on YouTube, Penny De Los Santos. TEDx, I'll have to, yes, that's, that's big. Everyone loves TEDx. Yeah. Gosh, well, before we wrap up, um, I just wanted to open up. If anyone in the Hangout uh, has any questions, feel free to just jump off your mic and, and ask them. And I'm looking here in the chat room. We had lots of people, Digital, Mitchell, Brianna, Nico, Kate, Evan. Nico. Nico. <laughs> you probably yeah. know who all these people are. <laughs> We're just like, I don't, I don't recognize Nico that. and Kate. Um, I mean, I just have to give a shout out to our incredible team of a, a very tight team of people who are behind the scenes at Creative Live and it when when during an event there are a ton of people who who come in who we bring in and are helping make it happen but there's a very small core team of us that um, and and each person is incredibly vital and I'm again honored to be a part of that team so Nico is Nico. <laughs> That's his title. <laughs> That's a cool title. That's a cool name. So how many, just off the offhand, how many people on a production like that are behind the scenes doing doing that kind of work? 
Yeah, there's often, depending on the complexity of, of a workshop, um, there could be, you know, over 30 people that are there. There are um, eight of us that are, that are full-time, um, but, but, yeah, quite, quite a number of people to, to make the, from the cameramen to the sound guys to the behind-the-scenes chat hosts. I have to say a lot of people think that it's just uh, me and whoever else is chatting, picking out questions, but we have, like, five sometimes six other people in the background who are helping monitor the chat room and, and picking out those great questions for us. So. Wow, that's amazing. Um, okay, well, let's see. Does anyone, if anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in. It's all quiet. Dustin? I think everybody's scared. I don't know. <laughs> Me, personally, it's not really a question, but, um, you know, like Kenna, I came from parents that were very big on making sure that, you know, for as much as you've been given in life, it's important that you try to give as much, if not more, back. And um, over the years, I've found myself, uh, you know, teaching um, not just workshops, but working with kids uh, with photography classes or parents and just teaching them how to take better pictures of their children and stuff. And I can't agree with you more, not only with... Um, you learn by doing, so even when you're teaching, you're still learning new stuff. I can't think of how many times I've just said something that's come out that I've never even thought of before, but I was like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that before. But also, um, I think the, um, you know, I guess the key word here is karma, the amount of, you know, personal wealth that you get back from giving forward, you know, something like that, uh, what you guys are doing out there, you know, when you do your workshops, when you have your shows and everything, it's just, you guys are kind of investing creatively and emotionally and, you know, in your karma for the future, and I just, I see it getting bigger than most of us can really even handle, so I'm, I'm just very, very thankful that you've taken the time to come and talk with us today, because I don't know about you, Eric, but I don't think I've ever seen our chat feed as busy <laughs> as it's been today, it's just, I can't even keep up with everything that's going on right now. So I think that that right there is a digital testimonial to the impact that you guys are making. And, and, and Kenna, uh, what would it take to get you to come be the community manager for Photog TV? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Yeah, think about that. We'll work together. We'll work I was going to say, Eric, let's not talk about that now because I think half of her office mates are actually in the chat feed watching the show right now. So oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to end up in a Kenna tug of war. <laughs> She's a nice person. I don't want to leave any bruises on her. I can't tug of war. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for having me. This has been a ton of fun. Um, I just, I, and I, and again, I thank everybody who is part of the Creative Life community. You guys are, you guys are why we're here and why we keep going. So it's, it's your support that um, allows us to be able to give this gift uh, to people all around the world and every continent. Um, it's pretty cool. We got a guy wa who watches from Antarctica, um, so it's wow. truly incredible. That's great! Wow. I have a what? quick question. Oh, Destry's got a question. Okay, I'm gonna go to Bali next month, and then so I want to bring my 5D, but I just don't know. I don't want to bring all the lenses, but to achieve like a really nice, you know, but you know, landscape and everything, which lenses do you actually bring? just not to scare other people. Right, right. Well, I, when I was traveling, I had two lenses. I had my um, 24 to 105 and my 70 to 200. Um, but I also had a little camera, um, a smaller uh, camera that did also shoot in RAW uh, that I could pull out a lot of times when I didn't want to be um, kind of too obvious with, with my big camera. So um, there are certainly got a lot of looks with the big 70 to 200. So I brought those two lenses. Um, depends on, you know, how long you're going for or how much you want to carry around. Um, but having a little bit of, of variety or um, would, you know, I think would help out. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So thank you again, Ken. I appreciate it. This has been one of my favorite uh, episodes so far. And uh, oh, I might you. even actually have to watch it again just to see what I missed. <laughs> i got to practice this more often. Yeah, yeah. there we go. we got to practice. <laughs> we'll Namaste. Like Namaste. 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 Uh, so you, oh, go ahead. 
I was going to go ahead and ask your question. I was going to wrap it up. No, I was going to wrap it up so you can, you can oh, do the wrap okay. up. No, so, I was uh, going to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching Photog TV. We are on air every Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. We always appreciate all the feedback that you provide us via your tweets at Photog TV or on our Google Plus fan page, photog.tv. Um, you can also catch us uh, through our website at photog.tv, and we try to keep a theme going here if you haven't noticed. Going. And um, you can also catch, uh, we've had some questions, but you can also catch all of our episodes um, later on. Uh, we do record them and post them on our website. You can also find them on our YouTube page, which is Photog TV. So yeah. thank you, everyone, in the Hangout for coming and making Kenna feel warm and included and, and definitely giving back everything that she's given to the world and the community So uh, and for everyone's participation. We really, really appreciate you guys coming out here and supporting her and supporting the show. Yeah, thank you. And I just wanted to also shout out, if you uh, don't know about Creative Live, go to www.creativelive.com. And uh, we have some incredible workshops coming up. Uh, and if contract. you want the list of ones to buy, I can give it to you. It's okay. Dubai, it should be the most recent one. Uh, I love the Vince LaFerre one. Of course, the Zach Arias one was great. Um, and if you that. didn't hear about Zach and Jody, you're living under a rock. Yeah, that one too. <laughs> <laughs> CreativeLive.com. Um, so perfect. Yeah, and if you guys, if you guys out there listening have any... Uh, suggestions on future guests, we would love to hear them. You can just email us at, uh, or email those to us at uh, photogtv at gmail.com and uh, we can reach out to those people. So thanks everyone for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, Kenna. We really appreciate it. Thanks everybody. See you all, all right, next week. Bye-bye.